Serving the Latino population is often hard for providers of healthcare for different reasons. One of them is that unless we speak Spanish, sometimes we're not connecting necessarily with them. If we speak Spanish, we can connect. But often for our, the Latino population in the Triangle, the life experiences that they bring with them are things that we can very, very rarely really imagine. Being an immigrant, um, I think that often it can be hard to find a place where you feel that somebody really see you for who you are or they understand you, understand your background, understand your motivations for coming to this country or what your hopes and dreams are. Aquí definitivamente eh, sí existe mucho el estrés y las personas no saben qué es estrés, no saben que están sufren de depresión. No saben todo. ¿Por qué? Porque son, es otro país, es otra cultura, es otro idioma, es otras costumbres. Entonces venimos con nuestras costumbres. Cuando llegamos aquí nos encontramos que no sabemos manejar esto. Entonces se presenta mucho estrés. Eh, el, el, el tratar con las personas, cuando uno llega a algún lugar y no habla en español, uno no sabe a dónde acudir, cuando va, tiene su hijo y no sabe con quién hablar. Entonces, afortunadamente, pues, de, en el futuro tienen personas que hablan español y podemos, y podemos ayudar. I think uh, the mental health issues are really big in our schools and children and families have to deal with uh, a lot of things and so if their home life isn't somewhat settled, if they don't feel safe, they could be going through uh, I guess a lot of different situations. But if they're not getting help on that front, on the social, emotional problems that they're having to deal with, then they're not able to focus on their academics. So they're they might be anxious, their minds might be at another place, and so to be able to help them with those kind of obstacles or problems really frees them up to be able to focus in school. Here at Forest View, uh, a third of our children are Latino, and across Durham, you know, we have a high population. So to have an agency that is aware of and be able to address the social and mental health needs of this community is vital for the success of the schools and it's vital to the success of a part of our population. You don't see a lot of Latinos um, kind of sharing their stories, sharing their voices. It's starting a little bit more but still they live very much in like the margins of society. And what that does to a person is that you know it kind of really gets to your sense of who you are when you are left voiceless. No matter if you live in Durham, Raleigh, Chapel Hill, around here, you will often notice that Latinos live like a parallel life. You might have gone to a restaurant with some of your friends and be enjoying a meal, and you're way into your conversation and suddenly you kind of see out of the side of your eye that the door to the kitchen swings and opens up for a second, and behind those doors there are often Latino workers in the kitchen. And very few people notice them or notice their lives, and they're really just not being valued. When I see them in my office, I'm, I'm, I often may have 10 more patients that I need to see. I have to make the decision, do I ask the question, what else is going on? I often call it a cloud, something that goes through their minds where they're actually, I say, is there something else? Hay algo más? Pregunto en español. I always talk in Spanish with my patients. And Sometimes I can see it's like a cloud that goes by. I need to grab it and find out what else is going on. I feel so relieved to know that I have in El Futuro a group of amazing clinicians, and I get tearful at times when I think about this. Amazing clinicians, behavioral health specialists, psychologists, psychiatrists, social workers, counselors who are really going to pay attention to those problems and I can actually open the Pandora's box, I can actually say what else is going on because I have a great place to refer them to. One of the stories that stand out is um, a gentleman that I'm working with right now who has been seen for a while at El Futuro and who has had a very severe, very, very abusive childhood. Uh, so came with a lot of severe trauma and, and addiction on top of that. Over the work with Futuro, he's been able to 
become independent like he's not a substance abuser anymore he's starting to reach out to the community and he's not he's not there yet but you can just see like the the light in his eyes without uh, our services being there i don't even know if a person like him would be alive el futuro ayuda a toda la comunidad eh, refiriéndonos por ejemplo en el en los lugares de trabajo eh, la, los empleados, las personas, lo, los, los jefes, al, al saber del futuro, pueden referir, decirle, mira, yo sé de esto, puedes ir a este lugar. Y es todo, es como una gotica de agua. Cuando cae una gota de agua, todo se va expandiendo. Y somos una comunidad muy grande. Es importante que El Futuro esté en nuestra comunidad y es importante que estén en nuestra comunidad porque están llenando una necesidad, un gap que nadie más está haciendo and they're doing it well. For me to know there's a mental health agency that I can send my Latino patients to, it's unreal. I have worked in Illinois, Iowa, Ohio, and North Carolina, and this is the first place. I cannot even, I don't even have words to say what impact that would create on these families like children, adolescent couples, adults if they could not come to us for therapy or for medication and, and just a general sense of support that, that we are there and they are like a safe place that they can come. If El Futuro did not exist, this community would look very different.